Now, here at Top Oz Tours, we generally stick pretty close to home. But in this episode of our YouTube travel series, we're about as far from home as you can get. All the way over on the other side of the planet, in fact, in amazing Eastern Canada. A melting pot of bilingual French and English heritage, First Nations culture and incredible natural beauty. I'm Adam Ford. And in this video, we bring you tips for 10 great things to do on a road trip from Toronto in Ontario up to Quebec City in the province of Quebec. We'll take in sensational views of Toronto from the CN Tower and get our roadie off to a fairy tale start at Casa Loma. From there, we'll detour down Queen Elizabeth Way to see the icon of North American popular culture, Niagara Falls. Then it's on to captivating capital, Ottawa, to soak up the gravitas of Parliament Hill and learn more about the First People. Next, we tap into the creative side of the Très Magnifique metropolis of Montreal. And finally, North America's only Walt City beckons, with an epic history to explore and heartwarming Quebecois cuisine to enjoy. All that and more is coming up. But before we hitch up, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing travel ideas. We're starting our trip in fabulous Toronto, Canada's biggest city and the economic powerhouse of the country. But that doesn't mean it's all suits, boots and nine to fivers. Situated on the western shore of Lake Ontario, the city has a relaxed and laid back vibe. And with more than 70 museums and galleries, there's plenty to keep culture vultures entertained. At close to 50 years old, the CN Tower is no spring chicken, but it continues to dominate the Toronto skyline. Enjoy sensational views of the city and water from its observation deck, 550 metres straight up. Across town stands another very impressive structure. And who doesn't love visiting a bona fide castle while on holiday? But being a youngish country like Australia, castles are a little thin on the ground here in Canada. So we're not going to miss the opportunity to visit Casa Loma. And very impressive it is too. Built in the early 1900s by mega-wealthy financier Sir Henry Pellet, the 98-room Casa Loma is a fascinating insight into the life of the Canadian hoity-toits of the period. Complete with turrets, battlements, secret passageways and the odd suit of armour, there's plenty to see. Sir Henry's finances hit stormy weather and facing bankruptcy, he turned the castle over to the city. It's been open to the public as a museum since 1937. It's an easy day trip from Toronto to must-see Niagara Falls. And our first stop is historic Fort George in the town of Niagara on the lake. The fort defended what was then Upper Canada from American invasion during the War of 1812. Judging by the period uniforms, pipe bands and crowds of onlookers, something big is about to happen. We've stumbled upon a reenactment of the Battle of Fort George. The War of 1812 is the United States and Great Britain. The United States declares war in June of 1812. They took Fort York in April of 1813, which is present-day Toronto. 
and then set their sights on Niagara. And the Niagara River was essential for moving goods uh, west. So an American officer once commented, he who controls the Niagara controls the rest of Canada. So in May of 1813, uh, on May 25th, the United States launched a bombardment against Fort George that basically blew the fort to smithereens. They burned it right to the ground. And two days later, on May 27th, 1813, was the Battle of Fort George. Where the Americans crossed, they outnumbered the British almost five to one. And uh, after a very brutal fight, the British put, put up a heck of a fight. At one point, um, an American officer commented the fighting was rapid and destructive for over 30 minutes at no more than 15 yards. They were that close. So, uh, but uh, the British are pushed off the field, retreat out of Niagara all the way back up to uh, Burlington, and Niagara becomes property of the United States of America. And they actually hold it from May until December of 1813. The people you see around here from all over North America who help do this, we have over 800 reenactors here who, who love this stuff, and they're here helping us this weekend, so have fun. Nothing can prepare you for your first sighting of spectacular Niagara Falls. And while theme parks, restaurants and bars jostle for attention along Clifton Hill, the falls are undoubtedly the star attraction. There are actually three waterfalls that make up Niagara. The largest is the Horseshoe Falls, and 170,000 cubic metres of water pour over the precipice every minute in peak flow. Take a boat ride into the watery abyss, or simply admire the falls for free from any of the viewing platforms. You can even get a bird's eye view, if you're game. Departing Toronto, we travel up the 16-lane Highway 401 to the historic lakeside city of Kingston, then head inland towards the nation's capital, Ottawa. Ottawa was designated Canada's capital city by Queen Victoria in 1857, and Parliament Hill has a regal feel. The architecture is stunning, and a guided tour of the precinct is a must-do. Just a stone's throw from the hill, spend some time exploring the Bywood Market, which was established in 1840 and covers four city blocks. There are hundreds of stalls selling everything from mushrooms to man bags. It's also a great spot to pick up a bottle of Canada's best known export. And while you're there, dive in to a French style pastry. Now when it comes to the history of Canada, the east of the country is very much where the action is, or was. Colonial history started here, but of course First Nations history goes back well before that. And we're here to dig a little deeper at the fabulous Museum of History in Ottawa. The Canadian Museum of History sits beside the Ottawa River. Its circular home was designed with First Nations cultural principles in mind and flows with the contours of the land and river on which it sits. The First Peoples Hall provides valuable insight into the heritage of the first inhabitants who settled here around four and a half thousand years ago. You'll need the best part of a day to do the collection justice. From Ottawa, we motor on to marvellous Montreal and it's irresistible. We only have a day to explore, but you could easily fill a week in the country's second largest city and the heartland of French-speaking Canada. 
Montreal has an incredible cultural scene, and from street art to fine art, every artistic endeavour is well represented here. A street art tour is a fun and low-cost way to explore. If you want to purchase a creative souvenir of your visit to Montreal without breaking the holiday bank, head for Place Jacques Cartier. Browse the art for sale or opt to sit for a portrait. And I was more than happy with the result. On to our final fascinating stop, and I'll let a local do the introductions. Okay, Quebec City was established in 1608 as the first permanent colony in North America, and was also established as a trading post for the fur business. This is what brought people from France to here. We do have two different and two distinct architectural styles. Of course, French to start with, and eventually when the British took over as administrator, they have implemented their architectural style. So you're going to see both everywhere. Street, uh, buildings, everywhere around the city, you're going to see beautiful, beautiful architecture. And some of the buildings date back to the 1600s, I believe? Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, when the British took over, we had to rebuild the city after the war. It took place here in 1759. And that's why these two distinctive architectural styles are visible throughout the city. This big wall that's surrounding our historic district was completed during the British regime. However, in 1871, the decision from City Hall was to get rid of the wall. However, we had a new governor general here, his name was Lloyd Dufferin, and he will make a very important decision to keep the wall in its original location. And because of this wall, we are today part of the World Heritage List. Now, if there's one building that defines Old Quebec, it's this one. Now, I have stayed in some pretty grand gaffes in my time, but I don't think I've stayed anywhere quite like this. It's Le Chateau Frontenac in Quebec City, and I'm gonna show you around. Step inside the chateau and you literally step back in time to a bygone era of opulence. The hotel is named after the flamboyant French governor, the Count of Frontenac, who ruled New France, now modern day Canada, in the late 1600s. Even if you're not staying at the hotel, it's well worth doing a guided tour. The chateau is over a century old and owes its heritage to the Canadian Pacific Railway, which built a string of these luxury hotels across the country to accommodate passengers. Now, this was recently voted by Canadians as their national dish. We've heard a lot about it. It's poutine. French fries, gravy, and cheese curd. I don't think you're gonna find one of those little red ticks on this one. Let's see what else is on the menu. With winter temperatures dipping well below zero, traditional Quebecois cuisine is understandably hearty and designed to warm the cockles. One of the best places to give it a try is Aux Ancients Canadiens a charming restaurant housed in the city's oldest surviving residence. It dates back to 1675. We've been invited into the kitchen to watch the chef preparing a Lac St John meat pie, which is typically made with game meats, including caribou, deer and elk.
Of course, the proof of the pudding, or pie, is in the eating. And I joined then-manager Martin in the dining room to give it a try. This looks amazing. So what we've got here is the Lax and John meat pie. Yeah, and over here we've got a bison and guinea fowl casserole. And I'm gonna give it a try right now. Oh, that's fantastic. I've been practicing for 40 years. 40 years. <laughs> you know what, I think you've got it pretty right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much for having us, Martin. Pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. For more ideas for amazing things to do in Canada, just head to our website.